everything you know about your health and wellness is wrong. Okay, maybe not everything, but are you open to learning something new today? The doctor is in. This is the Next Simple Step Podcast. I'm Paul Goldsmith. Dr. Jack Cruz is a neurosurgeon and CEO of the Cruz Longevity Center. So Dr. Cruz, what do so many of us, even many of our doctors, get wrong about our health? Uh, I think it's pretty accurate what you said initially, that uh, 99% of what's published in textbooks is probably incorrect. And the problem is, the further we get away from nature in science, the further we get away from the truth. And when you realize how centralized science is created, this really starts the clock on why many of the things that we believe today are present. So for example, the most provocative one I'd tell you to start with for your listeners, have you ever thought about why dermatology has this idea to block the sun? No, honestly, we feel like doctors get into the medical profession for the most part to help people. The answer is very simple. You block the sun, you make more money. That's the reason they do it. So when you realize that in centralized science, that incentives dictate outcomes, that is the reason why most things are wrong. Because the incentive structure in centralized industrial healthcare is completely wrong. Uh, it's heavily slated towards big pharma, uh, medical device manufacturers. And then in my neck of the woods, like neurosurgery, heavily push surgery versus non-surgical treatments. The reason why is we've created a peer review literature that tells people that we're better than doing it non-surgically. So you have to realize that the way that information was categorized was also set up by an incentive structure that's controlled by the people that control the narrative and the propaganda, and that's filtered through through the curriculum. Curriculum in medical school and in residency is just like propaganda in this industrial centralized healthcare complex. And it's going to take an act of Congress and probably a president who understands exactly how to unravel this because all the agencies that big pharma and centralized medicine used are all captured agencies now. For example, the FDA and the CDC, basically corporations that just license drugs, they basically are running IPs for other companies and other corporations. They don't work for the United States public. And the proof in that, you know, when people think that, you know, this is a hyperbole or this is someone with an ax to grind, you have to realize you can say all that, but the bottom line is we spend more money in the United States on healthcare and we get the lowest return on equity. So I would tell you that no matter what you think about me or my opinions, I could care less about you either because you know what? The money shows that I'm correct 100% about this. The problem is when you ask me the question like you asked and I give you my answer, it's straight to the point. Mm -hmm. It's There's no superfluous crap involved because the bottom line is the superfluous crap is what keeps you away from realizing that the largest criminal cabal in the world runs DC and the biggest cantalon effect is with big pharma. That means that they're close to the money printer and almost every single thing about the incentives is tied to money. It's not health. Everybody thinks it's health care. Mm -hmm. It's not health care. It's actually about money and profits. Incentives dictate outcomes. And until the next president of the United States understands that clearly, diagnoses the problem well, and then begins to piecemeal by piecemeal, take the pieces apart. And trust me, this is going to be one of the most difficult things to do. Why? Because the lobbyists that control the link between big pharma and politicians, this is as deep as the deep state. I think most people are with you as far as they're skeptical of the pharmaceutical companies, but how does one go about finding a decentralized position like yourself? Well, Paul, this is also pretty simple. Uh, but again, the reason why it's not simple, the reason you asked me this question, because you don't realize how well you've been conditioned by big pharma. When you want a specific pair of Vans shoes that are the right color, how come you know how to go get that, but you don't know how to come get find me? You know why? Why? Think about it. Do doctors advertise anymore? No. Doctors' practice has been bought up 
by the industrial healthcare complex. Yeah. 99% now are employees. So when you see, what city do you live in, Paul? I'm just out of Nashville, which I know you spent okay, some time so here. Perfect. So HCA uh, or Baptist or St. Thomas, all of those places, you always see Vanderbilt, right? Yep. You don't see the doctor's names, do you? You have right. to actually see Vanderbilt's name because they control all the doctors who are employed by them. Is that the same thing that's true with Van Sneakers? Is it the same thing that's true with taco chips from Frito-Lay? No, you, you get branded there. What is the key part of decentralized medicine? Doctors brand themselves because they no longer work for the industrial healthcare complex. Got it? We work for you. And this is what people don't understand. When you go to Vanderbilt and you go see one of their neurosurgeons or one of their doctors, remember that it's no peer-to-peer. -peer. It's not patient to doctor. It's patient to Vanderbilt to doctor. So the doctors have to do what Vanderbilt tells them to do. So, Paul, I'll ask you this question mm -hmm. so that you get this crystal clear. Who's the doctor really working for? Yeah. Is the doctor a buyer agent or a seller agent? See, it's the same thing that's going on in healthcare. Right. But you know what? None of you have realized what's happened over the last 20, 30 years. And the reason the industrial healthcare complex built the system like this is because it gave them total control over how healthcare is delivered. So now doctors use something that Vanderbilt calls evidence-based medicine that is basically an algorithm that supports profiteering, not you getting better. And you never realize how this all happened beyond your level to perceive it. And here's the craziest part. The doctors don't perceive that this is going on. Right. And here's the best part. COVID is the thing that woke many doctors up who never saw this problem. See, I practiced in Nashville for a long time. And the hospital system I practiced with was HCA in Nashville. And guess what? I was one of the last neurosurgeons there that stayed private. And the reason why is because I didn't want to be part of an evil empire that was going to tell me how to practice medicine. And I mean, I could tell you some of the battles that I faced in Nashville. For example, the hospital system wanted me to keep all my cervical fusions overnight because they could make more money from the insurance company. And I said, that's all well and good, but that's not good for my patient. My patient needs to have surgery and go out in the sun right away so I can stimulate wound healing and the fusion healing. But guess what? Because what was good for the patient wasn't good for the hospital system, guess what they did? They tried to come after me via the medical staff bylaws. So what did I do? I took all my cervical fusions out to small little surgery centers that didn't constrain me and my patients got to have the surgery done the correct way. And how can I tell you, Paul, that this was successful, that I was right and the hospital system was wrong? Uh, when I practiced in Nashville, I never had one lawsuit against me. Mm. But guess what? If you go to Nashville right now yeah. and, and, and go to the state board of Tennessee, mm -hmm and ask how many neurosurgeons in Nashville have never been sued, you know what you're going to find the answer is? Zero. Incredible. Yeah, it is incredible. But you know what the problem is? What's that? It comes back to the question you asked. Yeah. Why don't you know how to hire me? Because the system doesn't want you to know right. how to hire me. I am and very dangerous for the system. Why? Because I'm empowering you, the customer, with information that is beneficial to you and not beneficial to the profiteers that run Vanderbilt University. And the problem is you need to understand that. See, I can't tell you that. I'm not going to go you know, on WDN in Nashville and announce this through a commercial for my practice. If I do that, you can only imagine that St. Thomas, Baptist, and Vanderbilt, they're, they're going to do everything possible to come after me. And I will tell you what happened in Nashville with me is instructive for you. The hospital systems hired my best referral doctors and made them employees and told those doctors not to refer cases to me anymore. Understand now why you can't find Dr. Cruz. Yes. And you paint a dark picture. It's hard to overcome when you make some assumptions that people are generally good. And yeah, there's some evil actors out there. There's some bad companies, but as you mentioned, there is no good actors in industrial centralized healthcare. That's what patients need to understand. There's yeah. good doctors, sure. but the problem is 
they now work for the evil empire. Doctors don't know that they're working for the evil empire until something happens either in their practice, to their patients, or COVID. COVID was the big wake-up call for everybody. Because then guess what? The emperor had no clothes. How are you waking up your fellow doctors? Well, it's pretty simple. I've come down to El Salvador. And the way I came to El Salvador is the president of El Salvador found me on Twitter by saying all the things I'm saying to you right now. It's like, how come there's no doctors in El Salvador that are this vocal and saying the things he's saying? So he sent his administration out to talk to me. And when I talked to them, I told them the same thing I'm telling you. Yeah. And their eyeballs got this big. And then they told me something that was even more interesting. They said that none of our doctors in El Salvador actually told us what you're telling us. Why aren't we being told the decision makers, actually the truth. I said, well, it's pretty simple. The doctors in El Salvador were following along with the centralized dictums of the WHO and the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know better to question it. Because remember, this is very similar to how an animal trainer trains a baby elephant. Get a baby elephant. Right. It's all through conditioning. When you put a chain around that baby elephant and it learns that it cannot move, even when it becomes an adult elephant and the chain goes around the same foot, even though it can knock the building down because it's so strong, it doesn't do it because it was conditioned not to do that. And that is exactly what Vanderbilt, St. Thomas, and Baptist take advantage of. And it's how they keep Paul Goldschmidt away from Uncle Jack. They tell you that you want to come to Vanderbilt to see our guys because our guys are better than this solo guy that's out there. And it turns out, They never tell you who their guys are working for. Mm -hmm. They're working for them, not for you, the patient. I'm following. And I just discovered you a month ago on Rick Rubin's show. Uh, Which one? The one with Huberman or the one with Bobby Kennedy? Well, I listened to all of the above after I, I did a deep dive. Some people are hearing this for the first time. Suspend your disbelief for a minute and just assume Dr. Cruz is right. Let's get real practical. We know healthcare is not working in the United States, for example. Three quarters of Americans are overweight and nearly half the population is considered obese and the diet industry is billion dollars. What on earth, where do people start? I think it starts even more proximal than the question you're asking me. Um, I think the first thing you need to know, understand is that decentralized, when you hear that word versus centralized, what does it mean? Decentralized basically means that it's tied. There's no central controller, meaning that there is no boss over health that tells you exactly what to do. So everything in biology is based on light and dark cycles. That branch of biology is called circadian biology. So to answer your question, how does the decentralized medicine platform start? It starts with sunrise. You are designed to see sunrise every single day. What does it act like? It acts like the default button on your computer or your cell phone. So every day from your active living, You need to see the sunrise, whether you live in Gallatin, Franklin, you know, Murfreesboro. I don't care where it is. I don't even care if you can see the sun or not. Just go out and look to the east, okay? Mm -hmm. When I lived in Nashville, that's what I did for my deck. I waited for the sun to come up over the lake. And that's kind of what drove my own epiphany. How did I get out of the centralized system? It was when I was 40 years old. That was 20 years ago. So you need to realize that's what decentralized means, that there's no central controller. So for example, central controllers in Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt controls what the doctors do. St. Thomas controls what St. Thomas doctors do. HCA controls their doctors through their thing. What's the policing mechanism for doctors? It's called the medical staff bylaws, okay? What's the policing issue for the state of Tennessee? It's through the Medical Practice Act of the state. So doctors have to work within those constraints. Decentralized medicine, there is no constraints at all. Just so you're very clear on this, because this is going to blow people's minds when I tell you this. The state of Tennessee, and I'm not picking on Tennessee, but it's just because you told me you're there. The act of uh, licensing a doctor is tyranny in and of itself. Why? Because you're putting the state between you and the patient. That is, in decentralized medicine, absolutely a problem. So when President Bukele got this message for me after I talked to him, he invited me 
to the presidential palace for three hours. And I explained this all to him. And he said, Jack, what is the solution to this problem that we have in healthcare? Like, how do we stop the yeah. chronic disease epidemics? I told him the single most important thing is to separate the state from medicine. That means that there's no central controller. And then what happens, just like we have in other places, there's nothing between like a tree and nature. You know, the tree is grounded into the ground and mm -hmm. the canopy in the sun 24 seven. It operates by light and dark cycles. Everybody seems to know that. But when you go to the doctor, it should be between me and Paul and no medical staff bylaws, no state medical practice act, nothing from Vanderbilt University's algorithm should get between the advice that I give Paul and not. In other words, there's complete informed consent. When you bring me a problem, I tell you, these are the things I think that this could be. This would be the workup we do. This is why we do it. Then you ask me risks, benefits, alternatives. Dr. Cruz, tell me this, that, the other thing. We can have that discussion. That discussion for our first visit may take an hour, an hour and a half. Remember, Vanderbilt only allows their doctors to see you for 10 or 15 minutes for your copay. Do you understand yes. where the problem begins? It's actually when the state or a corporation gets between the peer-to-peer -peer network, which is exactly what the doctor-patient relationship should be. There should be no encumbrances between you and me. Yeah. Okay? That's the first step. And it's probably not what you thought I was going to tell you when you asked the question. Then the actual biology, actually where that comes down, we lead with this. In centralized healthcare, their focus is on RNA and DNA and on genes. Yep. The decentralized idea, because what do decentralized networks in nature do? They are the most thermodynamically efficient way that life parses energy out. So, and it, for example, we'll make this really easy for the audience since they're new. If you have a tree and say you live, I don't know, in Hendersonville, and it's an orange tree and you go to Lowe's right there on Gallatin Road and put the water and the nutrients in the ground, but then your grandmother comes over and puts a tarp over the tree. Are you going to get any oranges? No. See, the decentralized person knows, yeah, we're not going to do that. But guess what? The centralized guys at Vanderbilt are going to tell you, well, we can still make oranges. What we'll do is at nighttime, we'll put blue lights on the tree and you'll get some kind of version of some mutant orange but you'll get it and we'd like you to eat that because when you eat like that, then you'll come to see us and we can put you on Pfizer's drugs. That's well, actually how the system really works. We're playing God, right? When we're messing with nature. And that just reminded me, I was in Florida last year and we went to the grocery store and bought some oranges and they were from California. <laughs> what are we buying importing California oranges to Florida for? Something is broken here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I can tell you that that's what happens when the state or corporations get involved in between you and the doctor. And, yeah. and here's the crazier part that I think some of your listeners will really be floored at. Do you know that there's papers now out in circadian biology that shows when your food comes from a different time zone that it's actually unhealthy to eat, even if you think it's healthy? So guess what? When you eat an orange from California, because it's grown photosynthetically, and you eat it in Florida, it actually creates a circadian mismatch in your body and that drives inflammation in your body. Actually, that food, even though you think it's healthy, can actually make you sick. How do you like that? And yeah. when I said this stuff initially, 15, 20 years ago, people thought that I was crazy. And now that science has been proven to be true. That is not the evidence-based medicine that you get from Vanderbilt from St. Thomas, from Baptist, because if you knew that, you would not come to make appointments to see their doctors right? because they need you to be sick. I will tell you though, I do have a doctor who I'm going to share this podcast with. He's a friend of mine. He is decentralized. It's a part of a, a private practice. They don't take insurance and he has told so me So then that. why did you ask me, how do you hire people like that when you already knew? I know that I guess for the benefit of the audience, the majority of my friends and people I talk to, that's crazy to them. And when people look why, for a job- Why is it crazy? I can't believe that that would be crazy. To me, yeah. 
th this will show you just how bad the conditioning is. You walk into a doctor's office and say, who do you get your paycheck from? Mm. Yeah, That's all you do. That's a fair question. Because guess what? If they're getting paid from Vanderbilt, St. Thomas, that's a problem. They should be getting their own EOBs, which is explanation of benefits, directly from the insurance company. Mm -hmm. So technically, even when they get that, you're going to realize, well, they're really working for the insurance company. And guess what? That is true. So yeah. do you understand now why President Bukele reached out to me? He goes, Jack, you're basically telling me that we have to retool the way we practice medicine. I said, that's exactly what needs to happen. Yeah. And he said, okay, tell me how the system would be built. He goes, can you codify it for me? I said, sure. So I wrote him a constitutional amendment for his constitution last year. And I explained to him exactly how and this ideal system would be built. This was almost a year ago. Well, he just got elected on February 4th. He got 90% of the vote. He got 95% of Congress. I mean, if you're an American listening to this, you know that you can change the Constitution when you're over 75%. Right. So guess, guess where you, Paul, are likely going to come eventually? You're going to come to El Salvador because guess what? All the doctors there are going to be decentralized 100%. Now, you still may go to your guys in Nashville, but you're going to get their opinion. And then you know what you're going to say as a smart customer? Because now you know better. I'm going to get a decentralized opinion on this. Do I need a hip replacement? Or might there be another way for me to fix this without a hip replacement? That I'm not getting told from the doctors at Vanderbilt yeah. because... If I get told to avoid the surgery, Vanderbilt will not be making as much money as they would if I went to see the doctors down in El Salvador. Right. And see, it doesn't mean that you're going to get your health care in El Salvador. You know what it's going to tell you? That there's another option that the doctors who are complicated by the state, corporations, or insurance companies involved in your relationship, you may not get the whole truth. In other words, you may not get true informed consent. And the problem is the doctors many times don't even know the nuance. They have been conditioned in the exact same way the patients have been conditioned. And the problem is in a decentralized network, when doctors understand fully what I'm doing, they're going to be very interested in this because guess what? There's going to be onus placed on patients in a decentralized system because guess what? If the doctor tells you, you know, what to do and you don't do it, then we're going to tell you, you know what? Go back to Nashville and get your hip replacement hmm. because it's clear that you are not capable of getting better because you don't have skin in your own game. Hmm. So therefore, you should have Medtronic's hip cemented into your bones and then live with the consequences of that decision. Why? Because faced with an A, you didn't want to do it. So here's the B, C, and D. You went with the B. Good luck to you. I believe in being the CEO of your own life. You should take control and make your own decisions as long as you're getting all the facts, which Paul, sounds like you're most not of us getting are the not. Facts. You're <laughs> right. not. That's the whole point. Listen, the whole beauty of the punch in the mouth of COVID mm -hmm. was that every single person, no matter what your political ideology is, whether you're left, right, progressive, right. uber conservative, you know, or just a wackadoodle. The bottom line is we were all lied to. What you're saying makes a lot of sense to me. And it's personal to me. Shortly before COVID in, in 2018, I lost my mom. She was 65 years young. And when she was 60, she got diagnosed with dementia. And so I got to know a lot of neurosurgeons at the University of Chicago Hospital, a teaching hospital, one of the quote unquote best in the world. And a lot of it didn't make sense. And then listening to a lot of what you shared, and I've heard you on other podcasts and reading your work, it breaks my heart because it feels like there were things my mom could have done that she would still be with us today. And I recall she was very concerned about her skin. And so she avoided the, the sun. And if she went out in the sun, sunscreen, and she thought she was doing the right thing. She didn't want to get skin cancer. She actually was successful. This is the point that hopefully lands and you don't take it too personally mm. your mom didn't get cancer she got something worse it was very bad was her worse. brain got fried and the problem is the type of disease your mom had it has a technical name it's called an alpha synucleotide apathy 
Uh, these are protein folding problems that when I was in medical school, I never learned about how the skin was an accessory solar panel to help drive uh, energy transformations for the brain. Because what is dementia fundamentally? If you just strip out all the science, it's a brownout in the brain. And when you get a brownout in the brain, the first thing that starts to happen when there's no charge on the cell membranes, proteins start to fold the wrong way. When proteins fold the wrong way, I'll give you an example. This hopefully will help you. You see right back there on the top, that is yes. a wind chime. Yeah. I want you to think about the proteins in your brain, kind of like that wind chime. When the wind comes by, it makes beautiful music. So in other words, that is like Spotify for nature. Hmm. In your mom's case, the electric charge comes on the cell membranes and that takes all the proteins in there and they make their perfect music. That was when your mom didn't have dementia. Hmm. But when she loses the electric power, do you hear any music? No. The answer is no. And that's actually fundamentally what the problem was. And because your mother wanted to follow the dermatologist, their recommendations, she thought that was a wise choice. Why? Because that idea has been perpetuated in medicine for 50, 70, 80 years. And guess what happens? Then she comes subject to the Vanderbilt or the Chicago teaching hospital, and they put her on medicines they know that are not going to work. But I guarantee you the wallet biopsy that your mother got probably via Medicare at the end of her life was astounding. Mm -hmm. They did nothing. This encapsulates exactly what the problem is in centralized medicine. Guys like me are trying to change the propaganda that's being sold. And, and here's the hard part, hopefully for you to understand. The places where ivory tower medicine is, they are the places where the truth will be buried the most. In other words, that's the last place you want to go. Why? Because remember, they are supported almost 100% by big pharma dollars, both their labs, their researchers, and their clinicians that have MD, PhDs. And you, as Paul Goldschmidt, the little guy from Nashville, needs to understand how the doctor that your mother was seeing is completely conflicted by incentives. She would never get the information uh, at all. I can tell you, most people never get told what I'm telling you now about neurodegeneration. And, and just so you know, neurodegeneration today has now replaced heart disease as the number one killer. But do you know why the NIH and CDC and the government doesn't want you to know that because then you'll start asking questions. I think that's what it boils down to is just be curious. And even though I wasn't aware of you or this point of view, when my mom was going through dementia, I intuitively knew when I visited her in the nursing home that she was in, they would have her in a wheelchair in the hallway under the artificial light. And every time I'd visit her, I took her outside into the sunlight because it just felt like that was the right thing to do. She needs some natural sunshine because we all feel better in the sun, whether we have any scientific knowledge of the benefits or not. And so in retrospect, what you're saying makes perfect sense. You talk about circadian biology. And so I just want to echo that for everybody that is getting curious about, you know, how to optimize their health or if, if they're going through a disease, uh, where do you even start? And I think that would be a great place to start uh, is uh, looking into this circadian biology. And uh, that's actually how it starts. You have to start with the sunrise every morning. And when the sun sets, wherever you are, light needs to go off. And it turns out that Alzheimer's dementia, Parkinson's dementia, any other kind, it's a combination of a lack of sun and also artificial light at night. If you do that, that's the fastest way to destroy a human brain. And to be honest with you, that was the story that was unleashed probably on the Uberman Cruz Rubin podcast. Pretty famous neurobiologist, Andrew Uberman, didn't even know that the blue light detector is in the human brain and didn't know where it came from. Well, this raises the point that I tried to make to you earlier. Why would you ever go to the University of Chicago or Vanderbilt to get advice when the guy that's at Stanford, which is far better... Yeah. Then those two universities doesn't even know it. And not only that, he actually is a brain researcher that works on the brain and optical networking through cephalopods. I mean, if there's anybody that's going to know this stuff, it could be him. And you guys got to see in a 10 hour podcast <laughs> that 
he didn't have a clue. In real it. time, he seemed like, open to it, though, that he was actually listening he's to He's open to it. But the problem is, when you're not told something your whole life, and you begin to see that it makes sense, right? let's put it this way. Why, why haven't I been back to Uberman's podcast himself? Why hasn't Stanford opened him up to that? I'm going to tell you the reason why. It goes back to what I said to you in the beginning of this podcast. Stanford's number one contributor is Big Pharma. Hmm. Big Pharma doesn't want this information out. They don't. Like where Andrew goes now, that's about as far as they'll let him go. Okay? Hmm. They're not going to take him or let him go all the way that I've already taken you. Yeah. And you need to realize as the patient's, you need to demand from your clinicians and your researchers that there should be nobody between you and your doctor because you will never get the truth when there's somebody between you. And that is ultimately why I'm building what I'm building here. I can't do this in the United States. I, this is the reason why the second podcast that I did with Bobby Kennedy was huge. This was before he picked Nicole Shanahan. Most people don't know the story. Nicole contacted with me. She is a patent attorney for Google. She used to be married to Sergey Brin. Well, she had a baby born to her that had autism. And I explained to her, much like I just explained to you about your mom, that the link of autism is linked through light, through melanopsin and migration problems. This is something that Nicole had never heard of before. In fact, so much so that I told her that if she donated money to a gentleman who was making a, a blue light uh, computer, meaning subtracting all the blue light, yeah. that I would write a blog post for her daughter, which I did. It's called the Quantum Engineering 45 blog post. When she read that, she was stunned. She goes, I have never heard this from anybody. And I said, well, just remember, Nicole, you and your ex-husband are the reason your daughter got autism. Why? Because you're the ones that hold the patents on blue lights. Now, if you don't think that was a huge punch in the mouth to her, that was similar to how Uncle Jack was when I was 40 years old, you know, working in centralized healthcare. It took my punch in the mouth to wake me up. And it turns out with Nicole, she got her punch in the mouth. So why did I do the Bobby Kennedy podcast with Rick? Because Nicole's the one who set it up. And Nicole then invested heavily in the computer that actually has no blue, blue light. These are all things that you don't know behind the scenes. So I want you to think about this. This is why the Democratic and Republican Party do not want Bobby and Nicole involved in your life at all. Why? Because they have made it part of their platform that the two decentralized networks that are very high up for them are nature and Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the one that is, how shall we say, artificial. Because what does it do? It separates your money from the state. Mm -hmm. And what does decentralized biology do? It separates doctors from the state. So when you hear Bobby and Nicole talk about these issues, realize that they understand that the middleman between you and your doctor is the biggest problem. The people who you think especially the people of Tennessee, because remember, I used to live there a long time. Right. I know that it's predominantly a conservative state. It's got two liberal places in it, Memphis and, and downtown Nashville. Mm -hmm. The people in Tennessee think that Nicole and Bobby are nasty, bad politicians. I'm going to tell you when it comes to these issues, they're not. They are well, absolutely working for you. Let me finish. Sure. This is very, the Marsha Blackburns of the world need to know loud and clear that Trump is a problem. He's president operation warp speed. But so is Biden. Remember, they're the uniparty. The uniparty works with big pharma. Okay, both sides. You need to know that, Paul. Yeah. And for me as a voter now, I am only a two issue voter now. I only care about decentralized medicine and decentralized money. Why? Because I'm doctor decentralized, okay? Right. I don't care about anything else. Not, there is not one other thing that happens because my belief is if we don't fix the problem in medicine and we don't fix the problem in money, we will never fix the problem we just lived through for four years and we will face medical treason, 
medical tyranny again and again and again. Why? Because the government will have learned that this was a perfect way to attack our freedoms. In the future, when you ask me the question you started this, Jack, where do I find my doctors? Yeah. Now I think you should know exactly how to find your doctors. The first question you need to assess is who is between you and your doctor? Yeah. Who are they being paid by? Incentives drive outcomes. You got it. Absolutely. I really appreciate the time, Dr. Cruz. I'm almost speechless. I I think that it's a lot of, I would say, darkness. (laughs) This is heavy information, but I'm hopeful. I think this is actually sunlight. This is the disinfectant. (laughs) <laughs> on the darkness. You know, want to know where the darkness is, my friend? Yeah. It's the University of Chicago. I hear it's you. That's University. It's at Vanderbilt. It's at St. Thomas. But guess what? The people of Nashville that are listening to this don't know what they don't know. And it turns out when what you don't know is the biggest thing in the recipe, oh, my friend, that's when atrocities can happen. Well, that's it. And I happen to believe the truth shall set you free. So I do feel this is a hopeful message in that the more the truth gets out there, the more people question this, the more people look for incentives and alternatives, there will be a tidal wave. It's not easy for sure. But if you start investigating for yourself, the things we've talked about, I think that's a great next step. Uh, Dr. Cruz, what's the best place for people to start to to look into your research and, and to find you? I think probably the easiest way in the beginning is to listen to all the podcasts that I've done. I've done thousands of them now. If you just put my name in a Google box, you'll find it. Mm -hmm. And I think on LinkedIn, I've written about 190 free articles. My old website, jackcruise.com, there's a ton of free blogs that are out there. I've got a book on Amazon that lays out the basics of all this. And then I think the big stuff, when you're really interested to jump down the rabbit hole and you want to know, about some of the details, like the details mm-hmm. that I shared with Bobby Kennedy, right. with Kelly, and also with Nicole Shanahan, those things are in my Patreon blog. And the reason the Patreon blog exists, because I want to be clear about this, you have to pay me five bucks a month to do it. Not because I need your five bucks. It's so that the state board of medical examiners everywhere can't come after me. I'm censoring myself so that they can't get me. So if what you heard today between me and Paul isn't worth a cup of coffee a month, then stay on the pathway of centralized medicine and good luck to you. But if you heard something here that you like, I would tell you, spend the five bucks for one month and read everything you possibly can read. Because guess what? Then you'll begin to understand what decentralized medicine is. And you'll be shocked to know that when you are a Patreon member and you ask me a question, you actually get a response from me, not my nerves. Not, you know, some answering service from Vanderbilt University, actually from the neurosurgeon. Mm -hmm. And will I direct you to different blogs that you need to read about your particular topic? The answer is I will. But this is what else you'll find out about. If I direct you there and you don't read it, don't ever bother calling me back. Okay? Because part of your job as the decentralized patient is to value the information I'm sharing with you. Right. So if you don't read it, then I'm not interested. It really sticks with me that incentives drive outcomes. And in particular, that there's a lot of doctors and health gurus on the internet, and people could put you in that same category. But my 15-year-old son pointed out, he's not making any money off the sun. And there are these gurus and coaches and all that stuff. They're selling supplements and Stop. you put the suggested diet for your patients for free on the internet. As you mentioned, you've got free articles on LinkedIn and on Twitter and all these podcasts. So the information is free. The sun is free. That's your number one piece of advice. All decentralized medicine is about is it's called the three-legged stool. It's light, water, and magnetism. So we've only talked really about light. Right. There's more to this story. But like I said, once, if you heard something here that you like, you jump yep. down the rat hole and I'll teach you the rest. But if you put Dr. Jack Cruz in just about any social media thing, you will find something because what am I trying to tell you, Paul? What am I selling you? I'm selling you the ability to rent the information that's in my head about the decentralized network that you should care about, which is nature. And that's the one that Vanderbilt, St. Thomas, and 
Baptist want to block you from. Why? Because if you don't employ light water magnetism, you will be their customer and you will use drugs and you will use a lot of them and you will have hip replacements and spine fusions and dementia and, you know, dementia medicines and brain tumors and all kinds of things that you think that you couldn't possibly avoid, but you could. And all you need is the information about how these things are linked. I don't expect anybody to know how these things are linked. But once you learn how they're linked, oh, then I'm going to hold your feet to the fire. Then I'm going to be the doctor you really don't like. Because <laughs> guess what? You're going to tell when the truth. don't do what you're supposed to do, that's when I fire you. That's on you. <laughs> right. It's on the individual. Dr. Right. Cruz, thank you so much. I'll have to have you back. We can talk about the other two things, water and magnetism, but you can't argue with the laws of nature. And that's all you're talking about here. So <laughs> you can, but to your own detriment. I, and I so, thank you, Dr. Cruz. Have an incredible day. And I hope to talk to you again soon. All right. Take care, Paul. That was a ride. What do you think? I would really like to know your perspective on our conversation. You can reach out on Instagram or X. I'm Paul J. Goldsmith on both or through the website nextsimplestep.com. And I'll talk to you next time on the next Simple Step Podcast.